<laughs> when you're looking at the side of my head, everything's kind of weird and purple. Does it show up the same way for you? I'm not mute. Mute. There. Awesome. All right. Well, it is twelve nine thirty. So we can get started with the first Q&A of the day here at DEF CON Safe Mode. My name is P. Labrity 9 I'm here with my fellow goon, Fallible. Hey, Fallible. Greetings. And we are also here with our first speaker of the day. We are here with Feng Xiao, who is going to answer your questions all about his presentation, Discovering Hidden Properties to Attack the Node.js Ecosystem. Hey, Feng, how's it going? Hi. Hi, good. How are you guys? We're doing great. It's awesome to have you here. Watched your uh, presentation. You did an incredible job with that. Highly recommend that people go check that out. It's available uh, on YouTube. DEF CON has those videos up. Um, and you can also ask questions to Fung on the, the Discord channel at the Track 1 Live QA channel. So yeah, we have a few questions that are coming in. Uh, so we can ask him some of those questions. Um, let's see. Let me actually start with one. I'd love to get this one out there as a start. So this is not your first time presenting at DEF CON, is it? So uh, how many times have you, uh, have you given DEF CON presentations? Okay, so before the safe mode talk, I only came to the DEF CON once, and that is my first time safe talk. It's in 2018. So in that talk, uh, I present some new vulnerabilities that I discussed in software in binary networks. Yeah, so, so this is actually my second time at that time. That's fantastic, and we're really glad you uh, decided to come back and join us again. There was a, somebody was trying to ask if we were going to uh, uh, do first time uh, rituals with you, but we don't have to because you're an old hat with this. You've already done that, so that's awesome. Let's see, we got some questions coming in yet. Like, Fung, one of the questions that uh, we were kind of wondering about with your research that you did on the Node.js ecosystem is uh, what type of people should use the tool that you released? Uh, I know you mentioned the tool in your presentation. Maybe you want to mention that a little bit. And what kind of people should be using that sort of thing? Okay, yeah. So. Uh, so, so this, this is, uh, according to our research, we found this is kind of uh, widespread problems and many uh, Git report or NPM project has this problem. So I believe that there are two kinds of people that they want to use this tool. The first kind of tool is, uh, the first kind of people is about the developers. I believe they can use this tool to detect uh, their own software and uh, so that they can catch and discover all these hidden properties before they release a version. And uh, a second type of people that we think can use this tool is some white hat uh, pen testers or hackers uh, when they want to do some um, security uh, analysis Maybe they can use these tools to detect some um, vulnerabilities or problems within their targets. Yes. Excellent. All right. So, so uh, yeah, people, people have noticed, noticed that we're, uh, we're, we're a little bit weird on our adjustments. We're trying to get that fixed as we go. Yeah. Enjoy the testing and production. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, let's say. So, also, uh, Fung, one of the things that you mentioned in the presentation uh, where you had this discovery in Node.js, um, you also reference Ruby on Rails and PHP. So does it exist in those languages and platforms, and could it exist possibly in others? Should people try to go find this same vulnerability in other platforms? Okay, thanks for the question. So. Yeah, so as you guys have already observed in uh, my presentations, so uh, this, the root cause or of the vulnerabilities mainly comes from the object sharing. So if a language platform has such a feature or some uh, applications that are using some kind of object sharing, 
then there could be have a problem there. But why we are use uh, we are studying Node.js here is because to use the language uh, the, the the flexibilities of JavaScript. Uh, the object it can be really flexible. So this empowers the attackers to propagate a lot of um, bad things into the programs. So that's why we are studying Node.js, and we believe maybe there's other. Um, um, Problems that are not discovered yet, but uh, I think it is uh, really a good direction to also explore this in other languages as well. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Checking for some more questions from the audience. Can we Here, I'll check for questions. Uh, Blavity, would you uh, see if you can get him get that video up just a little bit higher too? Yeah, I and think look at the stream. One We're thing. Still I'm going to turn my camera off and just see if that bumps them up. Let me try the same. Oh, okay. right. uh, yeah. Now we're looking at who we want to actually see. Right, exactly. No one wants to see our faces. All right. Cool. Okay, back over. Let's uh, yeah. what else the community has to say. Okay. So yeah, uh, Deadly Cobb wants to know when will the tool be released. He says, or this person says, they're only seeing a coming soon on the repo at the moment. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thanks for the question. So that is one thing that we I would like to mention in the Q and A. So for now, uh, as you guys may have already observed from the presentations, there are several components in, uh, in, my, uh, in my talk, uh, in, in the course. And uh, uh, obviously, from the perspective of user experience, it's not that well designed. So you have to print, uh, type in some comments to use it. So what we are doing now is, first, we are cleaning up the project code, and also we are mm, making documents for it. So probably the a short answer is that we are going to re re release it no later by the end of the August. Yes. Oh, excellent. So that's great to hear. All right. Let's see that. OK. Cool. Um, let's see. Who else do we have on there that wants to ask questions of our First speaker. Yep. We've got one. one OK, okay Tux, Tux is coming in. in with, would it be possible to talk more about, about the differences between HPA and prototype pollution? Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for the question. And uh, so, um, um, so for um, uh, for prototype pollution in knowledge uh, in JavaScript, we are talking about some some kind of attacks that tempers the uh, prototype object which is a special type of object in the JavaScript languages. However, in our attack, that, that is not our target. For example, in our attack, we are targeting at some uh, user uh, uh, application-specific attributes or something else. And also, uh, you, can, you may already um, see, as you may already uh, heard from my presentations, we are, have something that is closely related to prototype. But it's not about pro uh, modifying the prototypes. Uh, instead, we are trying to uh, force some attributes that can be found on the prototype and hijack the inheritance chain. So yes, uh, there is a there is a deep, big difference between the HPA and prototype evolution. Excellent. Thanks for that question. Okay, Tux. All right. Let's see. Um, and I know sometimes when you give a presentation, or you know from experience, that sometimes you have to kind of leave things out that you really want to focus on the main issues. Was there any kind of like extra tips or extra things that if you um, had more time that you might have included anything else that maybe people can think about uh, with regard to the vulnerabilities that you found or anything else that they can kind of think about around your research? Yeah, so, so due to the, the time constraint, we always have to remove 
find out some very interesting thing from the talk. And to be honest, if we have, if I have time, I really want to uh, case study every vulnerabilities within the research because that's what people are maybe expecting. And I, I think those vulnerabilities are really um, interesting. So my answer is the first uh, thing that I come up with when I want to add more to it. It is about those vulnerability case studies. Excellent. Is there anything that maybe other people who enjoyed your research could also kind of dig in and take a look at and possibly look for as well? So I know a lot of times people just want to kind of add on to research that they find and they're like, that's really great stuff. Maybe I can find the next thing with that. When you were doing your research, did you have other ideas of things that uh, maybe didn't have time to look into and maybe other people would have time to kind of help out with. Okay, yeah, so uh, I also, I think um, I can share with some ideas about Node.js. So for Node.js, I found a lot of interesting um, uh, applications. For example, I found that there's a many uh, applications are now deployed in the serverless program, serverless so platforms. So I believe that could be an interesting direction. Yes, so this is kind of a new environment, uh, in, um, different from the traditional uh, server environments. So, uh, and there's a lot lots of uh, Node.js program running in the serverless program uh, platform. So yeah, maybe that could be one interesting directions and maybe somebody have somebody hear my uh, thoughts, maybe they can come up with some great ideas and present it in next year's com, and I will be happy to see that. Yeah. That's excellent. All right. Looking for more questions that people have for you here. As, As we, we all attempt, attempt to figure out our uh, uh, settings here, thank you everybody, and especially um, for joining us for this chaos of figuring out how to uh, get this stream to work properly. <laughs> if you're, a, you're our first guinea pig, so um, and thank you everybody in the uh, stream chat telling us some suggestions of how to fix stuff. Like uh, we'll also go in and see if we can kill our uh, Discord notification noises. So, Fung, do you have any other thoughts about, um, a, I know that you kind of hit this already, but is there anything in the talk that you would have liked to have included, but you didn't get a chance to, uh, to, to give to us um, in your presentation so far? Um, yeah, so, there's a lot of details, right? Um, you know, I researched for a large project. Actually, I have been working on this project for almost about uh, one year. So there's a lot of details and things I would like to add into it. Actually, a good thing about that is uh, we are releasing, we are, we are going to release our code, right? So many people may can, can, can know a lot of details about the, my, our research. And uh, also, we, we have the plan to release our white paper, and I have been working on it for a while. So uh, I see. So. Uh, uh, if, if, if it is possible, I can, I can also share my um, Twitter account so people, so may, maybe people who are interested in this research can follow me or we can, I can also follow back. So, so, and I will update the status of this work when, um, when I release something new. That's a good idea. I'm sure there's a lot of people who'd be interested in knowing more about that. And good work. Um, we'll we'll make sure that we get that out to anybody who wants to see it. Actually, we can probably post that in the Track One channel. So I'll get that uh, in there while we keep chatting. <laughs> All right, so you told us some of what you've been working on. You told us what you're uh, aiming at to do next. Um, 
is there, uh, it sounds like you're open for more people to come up with other thoughts and some other research directions for you. Um, I'm sure I would, uh, I would like to know, and I'm sure some other folks would like to know as well. Um, are you open for, um, I guess I'm not sure exactly where I was trying to go on that one other than if people want to come to you and talk about this further, you've given them your, um, Twitter, um, there's a, well, let me step back. I'll, I'll think of my question a little bit harder and, and come up with another one. Uh, in the meantime, you know, tell us more about the, uh, how you came upon this research. Oh, you mean how, 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 how do I discover all these things, right? Uh, please. Yeah, 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 so um, so the process I discovered this one bit is kind of like uh, since I'm enjoying eyeballing the source codes of um, open source project to discover, discover vulnerabilities. So when I take a look at some pro some of my targets, I kind of discover discovered some properties that's kind of like uh, okay, well, I see I can, I, it seems that I can modify them, but, but uh, there is no uh, document, uh, uh, API documentation made about them. So that's why I just try to uh, input those properties. And it turns out that, yes, I can um, override those original values and uh, do something bad. So this, this is the very beginning or our motivating cases of that. So that's why we come up with our new tools. And that's an interesting way. So uh, it sounds like then you spend a certain amount of your time as you're doing whatever your day job is, hunting around and finding ways that things are broken. So can you give us a little bit more thought into uh, some of the other folks who are coming up and working on um, their own projects, how do you identify when you are finding something that would be a good DEF CON talk? How do you identify something that you'd like to pursue further? Okay, yes, yeah, so thanks for the question. So uh, I would say, yeah, I have some thoughts about how can how to make a DEF CON talk or a black hat talk like that. So for me, uh, if I found that if I can find some result or some new findings, which I think first this can be used in some real world settings. For example, if I found some vulnerabilities that is exploitable in the production environment, I will say yes, this, this could be some dev carnival or black hat um, talk. And also, uh, if you really think this this is a widespread or widely seeing problems, maybe you should consider uh, building some thing, some tools or some, uh, at least some streets so that you can, uh, so that people can use your tools or use your things and uh, make all the process of discovering vulnerabilities easier. Yes, so that's two things I think that could be useful. I like that. So you, you're starting small and you're uh, building out things that are potentially useful. And then once you have small things that you can start to release, you start to what, build the community around that, build a, a additional motivation, additional activity. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think also it's great to point out one of the uh, points that Foam just made uh, when you start thinking about what is going to be good research and showing it around, I know a lot of times people think, like, this is not really interesting to anybody else but me, and it's not going to make a great talk anywhere. And I know a lot of people have that kind of thought. And I'm, my experience has always been that there's definitely other people that want to hear your research and that you should definitely try to share that kind of information and research anywhere you can. So that was a, a great point that Fung was making up uh, giving to us there. there. There is also another question for you here that seems interesting from Soft Tortilla that wants to know, can you elaborate on the expected difficulty of getting those 12 CVEs patched? Do you think there's going to be much difficulty with getting those fixed? 
Oh, that's an interesting question. Yes. So for the vulnerability patching process, I do have some words to share with you guys. So yes, at the very beginning, I found that people are not expecting those vulnerabilities, and then they just think that okay, so this is seems like some minor issues. I don't want to patch it. And um, but things goes very goes differently after our, my research proceed. So I found more and more, and it's in, and in, and many um, people and industry um, companies start to look at these problems. And after things become in these ways, things change. For example, um, there are some um, commercial scanners starting to alert such vulnerabilities. And uh, some vendors who previously uh, declined to patch those bugs uh, have to um, patch them now because uh, those uh, vulnerability scanners uh, start to uh, say something like, "Well, this has a vulnerability. You cannot use those libraries." So yeah, so this is kind of like a process that nobody knows your research, and you kind of like nobody. But more and uh, after you get it, you are getting more more results. People are starting to look at it, and they will say, "Well, this is really an interesting and important problem, and uh, I want to patch it because it is already affecting our package usage." Yes. Excellent. Yeah, and you also at the beginning of that mentioned that sometimes people think like this isn't a big deal so i'm not going to bother patching it but for people that might not have seen your presentation yet i believe that you were able to take user input bypass protections and were you able to show sql injection during your presentation uh oh, excuse me in how, how far were you able to kind of in how uh, critical were the vulnerabilities that you were able to kind of Take this. Uh, take the uh, exploits that you were doing in your presentation. Like some of the uh, exploits that you were able to to do, and, and how far were you able to take it? Uh, yeah. So, 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 did, so the, the, the final uh, final attack, attack effects, effects really depends on the type of those attack, those attack targets, targets, right? right? So, so for, for, for some, some for the uh, case study or the modeling example in our presentations, we are attacking some um, uh, web frameworks. So, so we can, can build examples to demonstrate to people that, that okay, you see, if we bypass this, we, we, if we bypass your protections, we can, can do something really bad. bad. But uh, for, for some, some uh, other modules, uh, the attack effects seems uh, Seems more weight, which, which means people will say, "Well, uh, it's just it seems, seems like some minor logic bugs, bugs but uh, some, but uh, uh, it turns out that those minor logic bugs also can be a really, really big problem when they are being exploited with other modules." Excellent. Let's see. Fallible, we were able to find any others in there. If not, I, I'm, I know that there's a couple other questions, but I wanted to see if you had one that you pulled out. So, so I, th there, there are, are some, some more people talking, talking people, people are asking more about, about this, something that you already answered, answered a little bit about, about um, your, uh, how you found that target. I, I do have one other um, slight sidetrack question. It says that you are a PhD student at Georgia Tech. Are you willing to tell us what your, uh, uh, what your thesis is about? Oh, my thesis? Okay, so that's, that is my worry, okay? So, uh, I'm kind of... Uh, you can I see say no. Kind of, uh, I see myself as a kind of a hacker, which means uh, whenever I find something interesting, in, I will try to hack them. So that's why, previously, I do some hacks in the software defining networks, which gave people an impression that I'm working on network security. And now, um, I'm attacking the Node.js, so people may think, okay, so you are doing some web application security, right? Yeah, but um, actually, uh, I can tell you guys that my next goal may be in the hypervisor, which is, so I'm going to work on, work on something else at the x86 virtualizations. So I don't know what's going to be my thesis topics because traditionally people will have a unique or 
unified topics for their thesis. But for me, it's more about hacking and building tools to detect those um, annoying issues. Yes. So you're still trying to narrow down exactly what you want your thesis to be, huh? Yes, that's, uh, that's, that's exciting. exciting. Yeah. So, uh, Angel Rain asks, what's the biggest surprise you came across when doing this research? Um, so there's a lot of moments that I think is really makes me happy. For example, the moments I uh, find the vulnerabilities from large, uh, from some widely used programs such as MongoDB so that, or, or something else. So that is some moments that make me really happy. And also, uh, when I found that, um, when I found that my talk was accepted by that kind of that, it also made me really excited. Yes. Excellent. Okay. What else do we have? There's a lot of people in there chatting, talking some good stuff for you here, Foam. Um, how about one question is that for people who haven't really done vulnerability research, what's your advice on how somebody can pick a target? You, you, your your research here is on Node.js, but if somebody else wants to do vulnerability research, how should they go about starting that and choosing a target for that? Okay, thanks, thanks for the question. question. So, yeah, yeah so uh, I, I have been, been working, working on vulnerability research for a while. So, from my experience, or my suggestion is, there yeah, are, I, I kind of, of I, can, I can, can conclude two kinds of vulnerabilities that people, people may want to take a look, look at. at. So uh, the first kind of vulnerability is, is like something in our talk. It's about some logic bugs, and people um, can find some way to man exploit those vulnerabilities and uh, manipulate the program logics. So that's one direction. And usually, it is hard to uh, so it is hard to uh, using some um, so to 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 directly find those vulnerabilities without knowing the internal logics of the applications. Yes. And uh, the second category of vulnerability finding can be in the binary vulnerabilities, which is something like memory corruption. And nowadays, there's a lot of research using automatic tools like buzzers to find those vulnerabilities. So those vulnerabilities actually uh, it is, it is kind of a more easier job because there's already some well-established concept and the tools such as AFL or something else. So maybe if you are new to the vulnerability finding, you may also take a look at those buzzing things. So you may find some interesting results. Uh, in fact, vulnerability is everywhere, right? So if you using those buzz, you Finally, you, you can, can get, get some results. results. Excellent. All right. It looks like we're coming down to the end here. This has flown right by. We only got a couple minutes left with you. So if anybody else has any questions that they want to get into phone, please put those on the Track One Live QA Discord channel. Uh, yeah. Are you going to go ahead? One question I would, I would finish, finish up with, with um, would, would be. be do, do you have, have a call, call to action, action for those, those of us watching? watching? Do you, you have, have something that? that um, additional research you would like somebody else to look at that's uh, tangentially related to what you're working on, or um, you know, how would you point other folks who are interested in this subject towards more? You mean more in Node.js? Uh, yes, or even specifically related to the, um, to, to the attack you have uh, shown. Okay. Yeah, so for Node.js, I mean, there's some related attacks that people may be interested in looking in. Um, so I can list it here. So, for example, uh, prototype pollution, yes, so you may want to take a look at it. And uh, after you're looking at that, you may find that there are some connections or some differences between this and our talk. And uh, after prototype pollutions, 
you may also want to take a look at uh, the some well-known dis- uh, de- denial of service attacks in Node.js. Uh, denial of service attack is really a big issue for Node.js due to the single thread uh, event handling model. Yes, so if you search keywords like DOS, uh, Node.js, you can find a lot of useful results about how people attack the Node.js web application. Yes, so that's kind of cute uh, research that I would like to mention here. I appreciate that. Thank you. So I, I really appreciate your willingness to come and first off give a presentation here at DEF CON. It's, uh, the, this is one of those community events that only happens because of the people like yourself who come out and uh, do the research and do the presentations. So thank you very much. And thank you for being our guinea pig on our uh, uh, QA streaming here. If anybody has any additional questions, we can uh, continue to attempt to get those uh, over, or I would recommend looking at the Twitter account that I did link in the Track 1 channel. Otherwise, uh, we will go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you, everyone, for had who had suggestions and uh, considerations here. And uh, we'll go ahead and sign off. So thank you all. Big wave. Thanks, Okay, Bob. thank you.